Enforcement news. I had to do this article. I had to give my opinion on it because quite frankly, guys, I'm fuming. I cannot believe an ex-police officer. Well, I guess I kind of can believe it. But somebody killed somebody in their own apartment and she only gets 10 years. This is insane. So I picked this article, the Texas Tribune. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video, pass it around, all that good stuff because YouTube really don't uh, show any love to us anymore. Anyway, this Texas Tribune again, this is by Juan Pablo Garnenham. Hopefully I said that in Jolie. Uh, Amber Geiger trial highlighted why Dallas communities of color often distru uh, distrust law enforcement. I can say you guys ain't the only one, man. Holy cow. Hours after the former Dallas police officer was sentenced to 10 years in prison for killing Botham Jean, the city's top cop vowed to launch an internal investigation into police behavior exposed at the trial. Yeah, we're going to see how far that really gets, aren't we? Okay, let's get into here. The murder conviction of a white woman who was a police officer when she killed an unarmed black man in his own home. Again, his own home. Own home. And the 10-year prison sentence a jury gave her Wednesday each drew different reactions in a city whose history is rife with tension between law enforcement and communities of color. Now, you know, I bring this up. This would be awful in any instance, but you got to look at the, the one side of the story. You know, I always tell everybody, if you want to know what it is to be profiled, harassed, as a patch member, just look at what's going on in the black community. Holy cow. Uh, Amber Geiger's murder conviction brought many people relief, but her sentence for killing 26-year-old Botham Jean was derided by some as being too short, even though Jean's brother offered Geiger forgiveness and a hug at the end of the trial. The problem with that, yeah, I get it, forgiveness and stuff like that, you know, the old man upstairs, is that's what uh, you're supposed to do, but, you know, 10 years, that sets a... Uh, Oh, man, that sets a bad example right there, especially with an ex-cop, okay? She was a cop coming home, doing that kind of stuff, and, you know, for one, they take an oath to serve and protect, and two, how the hell do you miss your own apartment? Come on, I don't care if you claim you're working 13 hours a day, 14, because I know freaking blue-collar guys that are working 18 hours a day, and they don't forget their apartment. Man. Uh, trial, uh, let's see here. In trial evidence about police officers conduct following the shooting, which prosecutors said showed Geiger got special treatment? Oh, really? No. It's that blue line and you law enforcement wonder why people don't trust you. Now, would you give special treatment to somebody else who went into an apartment and blew somebody away? No, you wouldn't. Uh, let's see here. Spurred Dallas residents and Jean's mother to call for reforms within the police department. Well, you know, Texas is, is the epicenter of motorcycle profiling. And you know what? I think they're going to have a long wait because there's been a lot of action uh, from the Texas Confederation of Clubs and the National Confederation of Clubs trying to get this profiling stuff passed in the House and Senate where there's only been resolutions passed, no laws. Each state, you know what, we got to get on them phones. Anyway, quote, the city of Dallas needs to clean up in the inside. The Dallas Police Department has a lot of laundry to do. Allison Jean said in the Frank Crowley Courts building shortly after Geiger was sentenced Wednesday, quote, every single one of you citizens of Dallas and residents of Dallas need to know what to do to get your city right. Well, I can say that it has to be the state, too. Uh, Gene was eating ice cream on his couch when Geiger, who had just finished a long shift, entered his apartment. You notice that the media put long shift like that excuses it. She said she confused it for her own apartment. One floor below? Really? 
one floor below and she confused it. Thinking Gene was an intruder, Geiger shot and killed him, seemingly unaware of the ever-present tension in her community that began to again boil over during Geiger's trial, Dallas Police Department Chief Yu Rene Hall held a press conference shortly after the sentencing to address the community's distrust of police. You know what? It's going to take a lot more than just a press conference to get people's feelings toward law enforcement. Let's just put it nicely. Uh, back to the way they were in the early days, if you will. But, of course, in the early days, you guys were corrupt as hell. Uh, you know, Dallas and uh, the city of Chicago has a lot in common with police distrust. And it's stuff like this that really does it. You know, in Chicago, this one kid, man, they unloaded on this kid right in the middle of the street. Uh, I think it was the Donovan case, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But they unloaded on him. Uh, she mentioned allegations against police that arose at trial, like Geiger and her partner deleting their text messages around the time of the shooting and the head of the police union having cameras turned off so he could speak to Geiger off the record after Gene was shot. Yeah, we don't see any cover up right there trying to anyway, that big blue wall trying to come in. Geiger's defense attorneys argued there was no evidence that suggests the shooting was racially motivated, but during the sentencing phase of Geiger's trial this week, prosecutors showed the jury text in which the former officer joked about Martin Luther King Jr.'s death and made discriminatory comments about her black colleagues. Yeah, that ain't uh, too uh <laughs> you stupid doing something like that. That's one of the things that everybody has to understand. Even though if you delete your taxes, they still can go back to the phone companies and pull their records just like if it was a landline. So that's why I don't understand why people, if you're going to go out there and do something, why you use electronics, man? And you got to you go out there, tell people this, this, this. You know what? It's just not smart, man. Uh, quote, I can only imagine that the community's perception of who we are as the Pol Dallas Police Department and, if we're truly honest with another, what law enforcement is or who law enforcement is across the country. Yeah, you know what? Them bag badges and guns and uh, powers of arrest don't make you guys gods. But she said the allegations heard at trial are not, quote, reflective of the men and women of the Dallas Police Department. I'll explain that the troublesome testimony was now being handed over to the investigation from the department's internal affairs division and that any necessary policy or procedural changes would be made afterward. You know, that's good and all the policy and procedural changes, but what about charges? If we done something like that, turn off a camera or try to hide a private conversation, They'd have our asses locked up. Quote, the energy in Dallas is more volatile now than when the case started because you gave people a bit of hope, then you took it away, said Changa Higgins, head of the Dallas Community Police Oversight Commission or Coalition. I gotta agree, man. I really do. You know, I know in the biker community, you know, it usually is a segregated type of thing. But think about all the profiling going down in Texas right now. And if you look at this kind of stuff, it really goes against, you know, all kinds of racial lines and stuff. This is happening to everybody. And it's time to band together, I believe, with other organizations outside the biker community to help fight this type of stuff. Because let's just, uh, you know, admit it right now, uh, bikers really don't have a hardcore base of, uh, how can I say it, uh, rallying or protesting organizations that really bring the news media to its attention. So maybe, you know, it's time to work with other groups. As in the case in cities across America, many Dallas residents' distrust of authority stems largely from their public leaders' flagrant racism in the 20th century and the systematic bias remaining within the criminal justice system decades later. You know what? That is funny that they bring it up because you used to have Dixiecrats, you had uh, Democrats, 
Uh, they used to pass the Jim Crow laws. They were with the slavery movement. And it just mind boggles me how the Democratic Party gets the black vote. Anyway, quote, there are a number of situations throughout this country where white men armed have been taken in and black men unarmed are killed. Daryl Washington, one of the Jean family's attorney, told the reporters while the jury deliberated Wednesday, until we face the facts of it all, these cases are going to continue to happen. We would love to say this isn't about race, it's about training, but it's a combination. Again, same thing's happening in the biker community down in Texas, man. The profiling's pretty bad. For activists in the community, this particular death had a troubling double in reading. It was another shooting of an unarmed, unarmed black man, but at the same time, Gene was a middle class professional resting in the privacy of his own home. Could you imagine that a cop busted through and shoots you just because they claim that it was their apartment and i don't get it man I'm claiming it was her apartment and she went up a, a whole story come on quote a lot of times the police shoot someone and there is kind of, of a criminal background said higgins in this case there's nothing of that it literally could have been anybody he was a symbol of doing everything right and still not being safe let's see here a history of violence and distrust Dallas had a long history of police officers shooting unarmed people of color. In 73, Dallas officer Darrell King threatened 12-year-old Santos Rodriguez with a gun during an impromptu interrogation and fatally shot him. After being convicted of murder and given a sentence of only five years. Five years, and this is Texas who has the most... Uh, you know death penalty uh, cases each year they put more people to death than anybody but only get five years to this dude who shot a 12 year old freaking kid Kane was released two and a half years later now this woman is probably gonna be released in four to five despite any litany of us uh, police involved shooting decades past before another officer was convicted of murder in Dallas County in 2013, a Dallas police officer was not indicted after he shot and killed unarmed Clinton Allen. In 2017, another officer who killed Genevieve Dawes was charged with aggravated assault. You starting to see the double standard here? But Geiger's conviction was the third time in the last two years that a Dallas County jury found a police officer guilty of murder. A farmer's branch officer was sentenced to 10 years last year. January after killing a teenager, Jose Cruz, in 2016. In the last August, uh, let's see here, ex Balk Springs officer Roy Oliver was sentenced to 15 years for the 2017 murder of John Edwards, who was 15. You know what? This is, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the rest of the story can be seen on texastribune.org. But it is really disheartening when you see this all is just not in Texas. It's in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, Florida, a lot of small towns across the country. It is disheartening when you see people only getting 5, 10, 15 years out half the time of that sentence and they're killing people. And the only reason why they got light sentences is because, because they were police officers. That's not this country. You know what? I, it, it gets so tiring, the double standard in this country. If you're a cop or people have money, hey, the justice system works with you one way, while us uh, pigeons on this side work another way. You know, what do you think, you hooligans? Let me know in the comment section. And also, don't again forget to subscribe, like the, the channel and all that good stuff. Don't forget the Biker Angle every morning. Uh, Monday through Thursday, Motorcycle Madhouse on Sundays, and also the weekly uh, Biker News wrap-up on Fridays over on uh, MotorcycleMadhouse.com. With that, you guys take care, and uh, have a good day. See you tomorrow.